If you have diabetes, whether it is type 1 or type 2, there is a possibility that you may get a complication called diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is when your eyesight is affected by the change of your blood sugar levels. The constant fluctuation of blood sugar levels may damage the retina. The retina is the part of the eye that receives and processes light. This complication slowly builds up. Depending on how you handle your diabetic symptoms, the symptoms for diabetic retinopathy may not be prominent at first, but it may eventually lead to blindness. Welcome to Simplified Health Tips. Your place for factual information about achieving and maintaining optimal health. I'm Michael. Today Russell and I will be covering everything you need to know about diabetic retinopathy, including its causes, symptoms and treatment options. So, tap the like button, smash that subscribe button and let's go. Okay Russell. What are the symptoms of diabetic retinopathy? Since diabetic retinopathy slowly builds up, you will not experience any symptoms at first. Depending on the state of your diabetes, you will start noticing a difference in your vision. With diabetic retinopathy usually both eyes are affected. You will start noticing that one some days everything will look fine and on other days your eyesight will be blurry. If your vision is constantly changing from normal to blurry and then returning to normal, this may be a symptom of diabetic retinopathy called fluctuating vision. Another symptom of this complication includes an impairing of how your eyes receive color. This is because if your retinas are constantly being strained by fluctuating blood sugar levels, your eyes won't be able to process your environment properly. Lastly, if you have any darkness in your vision at all, like dark spots or dark areas for example. This is a clear sign you may have a complication with your diabetes. Interesting. What are the causes of this condition? Diabetes is well known as a disease that correlates with blood sugar levels in the body. These blood sugar levels, depending on how high or how low, will cause different interactions in the body especially if they are not within normal levels. Diabetic retinopathy is a result of this interaction between abnormal levels of blood sugar and your body. All parts of your body receive blood. What happens with this complication is that your eyes, specifically the retina, is not able to receive blood properly due to abnormal levels of blood sugar causing a blockage in the blood vessels. The retina attempts to overcome this by creating new blood vessels however due to the constriction of blood flowing to the retina, these new blood vessels end up malnourished and unstable. There are two types of diabetic retinopathy namely, early diabetic retinopathy and advanced diabetic retinopathy. The main difference between the two is how the eyes react to the restricted blood flow caused by the abnormal blood sugar levels in your body. In early diabetic retinopathy or also known as non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy NPDR, there are no new blood vessels being created. Instead what happens is that the current blood vessels of the retina are severely damaged. This leads to the weakening of the blood cells themselves and will lead to damage to not only the blood vessels, but also the nerves. In advanced diabetic retinopathy, the blood vessels in your retina will attempt to grow new blood vessels. Due to the abnormality of the blood vessels, these new blood vessels will grow abnormally and even deeper into the eyeball. The growing of blood vessels can lead to complications with how blood is transported out of the eye, this will cause pressure to build up and may detach the retina from the eyeball as a whole. What are the risk factors we should be aware of that may lead to diabetic retinopathy? Diabetic retinopathy is a complication that comes from diabetes. However, there are other factors that may increase the likelihood of developing this complication. The condition of your diabetes plays a big role in your likelihood of getting diabetic retinopathy. Depending on how long you've been managing your diabetes and how well you've been maintaining your blood sugar levels, Blood-related diseases, such as, high blood pressure and high cholesterol levels will also play a part in your likelihood of developing this complication. Since this complication is directly related to how the blood flows into your retinas, the condition of how your blood circulates and the quality of your blood will both be contributing factors. Other risk factors include pregnancy, tobacco use and race, specifically African American, Hispanic and Native American. What about complications? Are there any we should be aware of? Early diabetic retinopathy may lead to a complication called vitreous hemorrhage, which is when blood starts to leak into your eye. 
This complication will cause dark spots and even blindness. However, the blood may clear and the only indicator of possible permanent blindness depends on the condition of your retinas. Advanced diabetic retinopathy may lead to two complications that may happen in conjunction with each other. These are retinal detachment and glaucoma, both of which are caused by abnormal blood vessel growth. Retinal detachment is when the growth of blood vessels may develop scar tissue that can displace the position of the retina. Glaucoma is when pressure builds up in the eye due to the interference to the outward flow of blood from the eye. These complications may lead to blindness. What can our subscribers do to prevent developing diabetic retinopathy? The best way to prevent diabetic retinopathy is by addressing the two main risk factors. Namely, diabetes and the condition of your blood. Good maintenance of your diabetes and good management of your blood-related conditions will help prevent the development of this complication. Good maintenance includes constantly monitoring your blood sugar levels, regular checkups with your doctor, and a healthy lifestyle. If you have any blood-related conditions, ensure that you are taking the proper medication for it. Smokers should be aware that this condition is more likely to develop for them. Consider kicking the habit if you wish to lower your risk of complications. Lastly, be aware of your vision and as soon as something abnormal happens consult a doctor immediately. How is diabetic retinopathy diagnosed? In order to diagnose this condition, doctors observe the appearance of your retinas. Drops are placed in order to make the pupils wider, and the eye doctor will look for signs of abnormality within the retina and the blood vessels. Your eye doctor might also consider conducting a series of tests. This can be from testing your vision, checking the pressure within your eyes, or by searching for symptoms of cataracts. What are the treatment options available for someone with diabetic retinopathy? The main objective in diabetic retinopathy treatment is preventing the complications from worsening. It is important however, that you get tested as soon as symptoms arise. This may help to reduce the severity of this complication. The treatment for early diabetic retinopathy is through close observance and constant monitoring by your doctor. Proper blood sugar level management and striving to improve your health markers are used in order to slow or stop the progression of early diabetic retinopathy. For advanced diabetic retinopathy, you will be needing surgery depending on which part of your eye has been damaged. Vitrectomy removes the blood already within the eyeballs by creating a small incision. The incision is also used as an entry point in order to remove any abnormal tissue that interferes with the functioning of the retina. This procedure is often done inside a hospital and requires anesthesia. Vascular Endothelial Growth Factor Inhibitors this is a medicine that is injected into the eyeball in order to send signals to the body to stop the growth of new, abnormal blood vessels inside the eyeballs. Often used in conjunction with the other treatments or could also be used alone in treating advanced diabetic retinopathy. Laser treatment. This is used either to stop the bleeding or leaking of blood into the eyes from blood vessels or to shrink the blood vessels into a less endangering size. Photocoagulation is used to seal up leaks coming from abnormal blood vessels. This type of treatment is also known as focal laser treatment. The treatment will usually take only one session in your doctor's clinic to complete and is used to prevent your vision from worsening. Panretinal photocoagulation treatment is done by your doctor in order to shrink abnormally sized blood vessels. Often through repeating sessions with your doctor, the laser burns the blood vessels near your retina. This treatment is also known as scatter laser treatment. Are there any recommended home remedies? The key to preventing diabetic retinopathy lies in keeping your blood sugar levels under control. A big factor that plays into your blood sugar levels is lifestyle. A good lifestyle consists of the following. Eat a healthy and balanced diet. Physical activity. Putting a stop to bad habits, smoking, drinking, and etc stress management and regular checkups with your doctor ask family members or friends to help you as having a vision impairing complication may hinder doing daily tasks this especially important post treatment ensures that your environment at home will be more vision impaired friendly awesome stuff russell any final words for our loyal subscribers as of the writing of this article there are no reliable alternative means of treating this complication 
It is advised that you tell your doctor immediately if you are taking any alternative medicine that may cause further complications if taken in conjunction with the prescribed medication. Take note that early intervention is recommended before further impairment of vision occurs. It is recommended to go to your doctor immediately rather than testing and proven medications. Thank you again Russell, for helping our viewers better understand diabetic retinopathy. To our viewers, remember to share this video with someone who may benefit from the information. Also leave your feedback and topic suggestions in the comment section. See you next time. Thank you for watching to the end of our video. If you found the information helpful, please like the video. Also, don't forget to join the family by subscribing to our channel. See you next time.